Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Amundsen and today I will review the fifth studio album by the progressive rock band Supertramp. Um, I like I like Supertramp. I'm generally a um, you know, kind of a fan of them. I do like them, so you know they're a fine band to me. Uh, not one of my favorites, but uh, they have a place for me. They have a place. Um, hold on for a minute. This yeah, the song came out in 1977. It was um, recorded during 1976 and 1977. Uh, yeah, fifth studio. Like I said, this came after uh, Crown of the Century, I believe, and right before Breakfast in America. So this is kind of in between their peak I would say you know they um, they already had their quality peak I would say and it would have their commercial peak uh, two years later with breakfast in America of course uh, so I think this is a fine kind of fringe album kind of a nice middle ground I would say between the critical acclaim super tramp and the commercial side of super tramp you know, in the late 70s, it's also late 70s because so there you go, kind of blends in. Um, I would actually describe this album as a, you know, Billy Joel album gone uh, progressive, I would say. That, that's how I, that's how I would describe even in the quietest moments. I don't think, I don't even think I set the album, but there you go, even in the quietest moments by um, Supertramp. Um, and I thought I was just going to be like pretty general on the album, I thought I was just like, oh, you know, it's a good album, it's, you know, it's a nice piano album. But I really, really enjoyed this album. I, I thought it was really marvelous. Uh, sec first side is 21 minutes, 23 seconds. Second side has three songs, but it's longer, with 22 minutes and 4 seconds. This by the way, requested by Palm Hearts a while back, and you know, I was running out of requests, so I might as well do this one. You know, I looked in my reactions and I found this album, so I thought, you know, why not? I like Super Trump, so there you go. Um, we have the first one, which is Give a Little Bit, uh, which I didn't recognize at first, but of course, when that chorus kicks in, Give a little bit, you give a little, you give a little bit of your life. Yeah, you know, that song, really catchy, you know, iconic opening song. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, pretty much a staple by the band. Nice piano, uh, piano song. You know, all of them are. That's why pianos on the fucking cover. Uh, by the way, I actually do really like the cover with uh, the piano being covered in snow. No pun intended. Um, I, I do think that's a very nice touch by the band. I do like, uh, I do love me some piano. So it's nice to see on the cover. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. So there you go. Um, then we get. The fuck was that? Then we got Lover Boy, uh, which is kind of a sappy song, I would say. If I would have a least favorite on here, then it would be um, this one because it's just kind of sappy and kind of manipulative and just kind of by the numbers, I would say. Very passe, kind of cliche love song, I would say. Not really special, in my opinion. It's still okay, but it's definitely a disappointment uh, towards give a little bit of. And um, um, the title track, which is coming up now, which is uh, even in the quietest moments, really great piano ballad. This kind of reminds me of um, scenes at an Italian restaurant by Billy Joel. Fucking amazing song in my opinion. Um, yeah, really marvelous song. It just kind of does what Loverboy does musically, but it just kind of adds more lyrical wiseness to the record. I think the production has improved, the piano playing is more interesting to me. So this style of record is really catching my ear. I really love this style of track right here. One of the album's best at the moment. And then we got Downstream, which is a very uh, down to basics, very nice, uh, really appropriate closing song for side one. I really love the melancholic nature of Downstream. It just kind of sounds like a river flowing, you know, through your backyard or something. It just sounds really good. Um, I really enjoyed it because it was just very um, relaxing and very calm to listen to. I really enjoyed it, so. 
Uh, yeah, just an amazing closing song. Really loved downstream. Really underrated uh, cut of this uh, Super Tramp album. Then we got uh, Babaji, which is the uh, second single of the album, I believe. The opener of side one, uh, side two, so it's definitely a appropriate track, I would say. Um, I wouldn't personally really say that the singles of this album are my favorite. They're just you know iconic for their own right, and they, they have lived on to be the classics that they are. But I personally really enjoy like the the kind of deep cuts of this album, like the the, the latter songs, you know, outside of the singles. That's what I really love about this album, like. You know, Babaji is kind of like uh, it gives a little bit of sequel of sorts. It's a nice four minutes, uh, nice piano pop rock track. Uh, but I honestly, I, I do think it's a nice opener, but I do think that the album only gets better after like the commercial hit song of the album. So, um, so speaking of those better songs, in my opinion, is From Now On, which was a very big improvement. Uh, from the title track, I would say, and especially from Lover Boy. Uh, th this song just kind of takes it up a, s a step, uh, step up. It just kind of, you know, it kind of sounds like even in the quietest moments. Uh, but it is more of a, you know, it's more in the same vein as that song. But it also adds that melancholy vibe of downstream, which I really love. I think that this song really combines the best of both worlds of what Super Tramp already did in the past, and they really highly approved from side two. Other side of one was really fucking good too, but they got even better on side two. And from now on, it's definitely, um, definitely a highlight in my book. Really great song, I love it. And then we got Fool's Overture, which is the epic closing song of the album. It's nearly 11 minutes long. It's an it's a piano ballad, epic progressive rock piano, epic. You know that just sounds like fucking heaven to me. And the song arguably really is. It's uh, written by. Uh, Roger Hoxon, uh, who plays the 12 string guitar on tracks, uh, give a little bit of, uh, give a little bit, and uh, the tarot track. Um, I didn't even notice that, but it's, you know, there were good songs, there you go. Um, yeah, and I thought the Fool's Overture was a very epic, but a very appropriate clothing for this album. It's just a very great, uh, epic, yeah, just piano progressive rock song. It's just you know, on paper that sounds fucking awesome, and it is awesome, so I'm kind of like, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this song, because it's just, it just kicks ass, so um, I love it, it just has a lot of like, great uh, change of uh, styles and shit like that, so it's a really solid fucking song, man, uh, just a lot of, you know, different time signatures going on, there's a lot of great uh, musicianship, you know, the, the piano playing by, who plays the piano, that, that's a pretty major part right there, so. I think Rick Davies plays piano, I'm not sure. He's the only one labeled as a pianist on here, so. Yeah, he plays organ. Oh yeah, he plays piano on tracks. Uh, one, two, four. Six and seven. Oh, that's why that, that's why um, Babiji is one is my favorite song, Babaji, because there is a piano on there. So yeah, there you go. But it does play organ on Babaji. Still a pretty good track, but not one of my favorites. But Fools Overture is my also favorite as well. Might be one of my top ten favorite Super Trump songs. Um, I can't really say a lot about this track. It's really long, but. I don't have lots to say about it, it's just a fucking great uh, piano tune by a progressive rock band, so it's it's fucking perfect, there you go. And you know, great close to great album. Overall, I really love this album, um, I think it's near flawless, cover is great, production is amazing, uh, music musicianship is stellar, lyrics are great, it, kind of, it just sounds like a Billy Joel album to me. Uh, prog rock style, so that's you know in my in my ears that's just perfection right there. So uh, you know because I love Billy Joel. So um, yeah, I really love this album. I think if only Lover Boy wasn't on there, I was like replaced with a different song. You know, it could have been a perfect album in my opinion. But still, you know, Lover Boy is kind of a dud, I think. But it's still a really good album. I would give it a nine point five out of ten. Really great, solid, uh, progressive rock album, pop rock album by a great band. 
Like, subscribe to the channel, almost for future vlogs one and later.